Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of our series Power of People which profiles the Usos of the music business industry and today on this very special episode we have with us Hamza Kadri, Head in Music Division, DC Talent. We welcome you here today Hamza. Thank you for having me. Hi everyone. So Hamza, my first question to you would be that, can you tell us about, you know, your journey in the music industry, first of all, and how you became the, you know, head in music division at DCA? Okay, so interesting uh, question. Yeah. Firstly, I've been a musician for over 22 years. Uh, for context, I play drums. Uh, yeah. I started playing uh, in 2002. Um, I've played in like various... Uh, metal bands. I mean, you can see from my t-shirt that I'm clearly still a metal fan at heart. Uh, so I've played uh, in bands. I've played in like the non-film circuit, in the uh, Bollywood circuit. I've played with, uh, I, I mean, I still play for uh, Arman Malik. Uh, wow. I used to play with Junita Gandhi. Then I've played with Aishman Kurana, Jasleen, Nazi with their walks I'm still playing for so um, so basically I've had like music has been uh, you know something that I've done for so long in fact that's the one thing that I've done more than anything else that I've done in my life uh, 22 years now and counting so uh, yeah so music was always at the cusp of it but on the other end, I'm also an automobile engineer and I did my MBA in marketing and I used to work in the construction industry uh, so I've always had like, you know, music and business happening uh, side by side. Um, and like a, a few years ago, I thought that, you know, it sort of makes sense to to merge the two and bring in, you know, my expertise in both and, and yeah. focus them in like one sort of field. Uh, but even though I had like, you know, uh, such a rich history with music, People used to sort of shoot me down and saying, you know, he's from the construction industry. What does he know about music? But uh, Bunty was like the one guy who sort of, uh, you know, uh, saw the passion and the drive and the capability in me. And I joined as coincidentally, I complete like two years at uh, DCA. Wow. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, so I joined as the uh, general manager of branding and marketing partnerships, you know, because oh, wow. that's uh, that's something that I was I, I mean, uh, that's something that I could justify because of my marketing background. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I came on board, uh, you know, the uh, the division used to work very differently back then. And my job was to see how brands can be integrated with music. And yeah. also work on the branding aspect of all the music talents that we had at the time. Uh, I did that for about, uh, I think, four months. And uh, randomly one day, uh, Bunty just calls me to his cabin and he's like, uh, so, uh, yeah. So then I, I, I created like an entire org chart, uh, created like a six month, one year, two year and five year plan. Mm -hmm. Presented it to him, and then he set up a meeting with uh, uh, Apurva Mehta, who is the Dharma CEO. Yeah. And then that's pretty much how I landed up with this job, which I love very dearly. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, uh, so Hamza, how do you, you know, differentiate, you know, Dharma Cornerstone Agency with the other music agency? Can you elaborate on that uh, facet of that uh, of this? Sure. So actually in India, there is a lot of confusion as to what a management agency is actually supposed to do. You know, uh, in the West, uh, every artist typically has a management agency, a label and a booking agency. In India, people claim that, you know, that, that they own or run management agencies, but that is actually a booking agency also, you know, doubling up as a management agency. So, so what, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to bring in and create an identity for what DCA music actually is. Now, being a musician for so long actually helped because I know exactly what artists are looking for when they say they want a management agency. So we first created an identity of our own saying, okay, what is it that we do? Right. Yeah. 
that is where we sort of you know did some self reflection and then we said okay you know what we are a management agency yeah. we also do value added services like booking uh, mm -hmm. okay booking for brands and live and because we are closely associated with dharma production we also work on content so that was the whole piece that we came in and we said okay you know what this is what we do these are the value added services so i think the unique proposition that we have is that we have clarity of thought and we have the backing of something like a dharma production that enables us to deliver on various fronts when it comes to music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah so i mean uh, recent uh, let's come to the you know artist management as you said that the uh, management and the you know uh, what artists aspire in this time so you you majorly look into that aspect so it, recently uh, you welcome uh, neha kakkar uh, yes. on your agency what excites you the most about you know uh this job and what more artists do you cater to okay so a uh, great question first of all we're very very uh you know glad to have somebody like neha kakkar uh on our roster uh in fact the day she joined she she sent me a screenshot of uh you know the top 10 female artists from this is uh, like a, a, a few years ago where she was literally number 2 after nikki minaj you know so wow. to have somebody uh, uh, on 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 our roster who who comes in with that rich legacy is wow. is 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 a huge thing right so uh, but let me let me just clarify all the artists that we have on our roster so say for example we've got neha kakkar we've got jubin notyal we've got neeti mohan amal malik nikita gandhi nakash aziz you know they're from the the main uh, the the more mainstream bollywood side then we have arjun kanango that we recently signed we've got vidya box uh, we've got dj sanjoy um, then shreya jain selina sharma uh, we we've, we've got a lot of artists who are in various stages of their career some of them are hardcore bollywood some of them are completely indie the mm -hmm. idea here is to have a good mix of artists okay yeah. but the core you know concept that we work on is that we want to partner with an artist to execute the vision that they have right yeah. for example neha kakkar has pretty much done everything possible in the indian context right so what is it that will excite her right yeah the idea is to probably try and see like firstly what we try to do is we try to get the artist to write down literally like a mission statement that you know this is what i want to do in the next one year and mm -hmm. then we kind of internalize it okay you know now now neha kakkar is here she wants to go here what so are the steps that would be required so it's a proper creative process it's it it is literally like getting inside the brain of an artist and understanding yeah. what is it that they and want yeah. yeah because if if the management agency is not in sync with the artist yeah. the artist could be thinking that okay mujhe ye karna hai the agency might be thinking oh you know what this is what i want her to do and there will be a disconnect right then it will it will lead to nothing so yeah. our agenda is no matter how big or small an artist is they have like a certain vision right they have a certain goal a certain dream our job is to say okay you know what if you want to do this Then. these are the things that we will have to do right mm -hmm. and you need to keep small milestones take baby steps because only then you will be able to achieve their big dream and obviously what's in it for us if we are able to raise the price point of an artist from say x to 10x yeah we are sort of fulfilling their dreams at the same time we are also earning right because the more the artist earns the more we earn right so it's a it's a collaborative partnership so that's that's how i look at it and and the dreams could be you know as as small as i want to perform at lollapalooza or i want to perform at all the uh, you know top prestigious colleges or it could be something like i want to go on an india tour or i want to go on a world tour or i want to collaborate with 
Ed Sheeran, for example. What those dreams are, we try to pen down and we say, okay, you know what? These are the steps that we will take to achieve them. That's as as simply put as possible. That's what we want to do. Yeah. So, Hamza, are there any you know innovative venue models or streams you are exploring? Uh, you know, recently, and you have recently implemented in this scenario in this creative process. And how do you know collaborations, partnerships contribute to the agency's revenue? Okay, so uh, that's 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 a great question. Uh, first of all, there are multiple sort of. Uh, uh, you know, revenue streams that are possible when it comes to music. So just to let the audience know what those are. Firstly, there's, uh, you know, revenue from live performances, uh, which is like a huge chunk of what Indian artists earn, right? Then for all the non-film artists, they yeah. earn a revenue from their streaming content, right? Uh, when you own the the rights to your own songs you can also get into sync deals these could be with brands these could be with uh, production houses ott platforms where you where you let uh, you know a, a production house or a brand license a song for some time uh, then there could be branded content where you create songs for brands uh, that's another revenue stream then there is uh, revenue from brand endorsements uh, then there is brands from, you know, one-off digital deals as influencer campaigns. Then there's merchandising. Um, so, so there are all these sort of various revenue streams which are possible. In India, I feel there are a lot of untapped potentials, okay? And that is to integrate with brands more seamlessly, right? Uh, I feel that a lot of the brand work in music that has happened has always been like, oh, a brand has some amount of money. Uh, they want to, you know, cater to the audience that, that like, say, a Gen Z singer or a Bollywood singer or a rap, a, a, a rap artist uh, has in, in his or her grip. And they're like, okay, you know what, we'll take this and put the brand in front of it and ho gaya. Aise nahi hota hai, you know, yeah. you need to you need to have like a logical, seamless sync between the brand's target audience and yeah. the target audience of the artist when it comes together in an organic manner. That is when the when the beauty of it gets sort of revealed. You know, I feel that is something that we want to do. Uh, right. We we in fact did. A lot of brand integrations, uh, you know, one one example was the uh, Jocelyn Royal Hiri music video yeah. uh, where we integrated with Boat, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, which was that which was, was like a collaboration. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, we're, we're very proud of that fact. In fact, I went and actually bought the Boat products and handed it to Jocelyn's driver like the night before because everything was like, you know, so uh, so crammed. Uh, but yeah, there are there are several such opportunities and. I feel we're trying to, you know, get into that side. Uh, there, there is a lot of work that is required, but I feel that is like a like a open greenfield opportunity. Yeah. And obviously, then there's a lot of branded content. Like we've we've uh, you know done uh, uh, properties like uh, Royal Stag Boombox uh, last year and this year, yeah. where we had Nikita Gandhi, uh, Neeti Mohan. Uh, uh, then, then we've done uh, uh, stuff with uh, McDonald's, the McDonald's I'm loving it property that we did last year, where we had uh, Neeti, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Lisa Mishra, Nikita Gandhi, um, and I think we had locked Justin also for it, but uh, it didn't go through for some reason. But the idea is that there are all these opportunities that are available now. It needs to be done smartly and creatively and having a musician at the, you know, the mix of it all to say, to tell the brand, no, oh, you know what, this artist will not do this. That uh, is, is a USP that I think we have and we want to exploit. Yeah, the perfect blend, I would say, I must say. Uh, so, you know, uh, how do you ensure consistent, you know, brand positioning across, you know, various marketing channels in this time? Be huh. Yeah, so it's it's tricky because, uh, you know, uh, I, I've sort of faced this a lot 
where when you're talking to a particular brand or we're talking to a, another booking agency or talking to anyone and they're like oh we didn't know that dca had a music division and i'm like exactly mm-hmm. yeah so uh so so there are steps that we've taken I, i mean so to be to be fairly honest we are we are fairly well known in the live performance uh yeah. that's you know uh, circle uh, because that is primarily what we did in the last two years you know uh so people know that okay uh, dca is a, a a live booking agency also of sorts or that they know that okay you know to get in touch with neeti mohan or nikita gandhi or nakash aziz get in yeah, touch with dca yeah correct but but what we also bring in is a lot of experience when it comes to being like the the authority on music yeah. whether it is with content whether it is with brands or coming up with innovative brand solutions that is something that is not so well known but now so there are there are multiple ways that we 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 approach it one is that obviously we have a sales team that goes out and and literally showcases that okay you know what apart from live bookings these are all the things that we can do uh, in mm-hmm. fact uh, uh, we we just came from a couple of meetings with one of the biggest uh, brand solution agencies and they like oh my god you know you have all these things which are possible and we didn't know we were running around in circles trying to find this this one sort of agency that can do this for us and we're like just sitting here you know just come to us whenever you hear the m of music we want you to think of us you know right. so 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 that is where we build personal relationships second yeah. is where obviously we we have our own uh, you know a pr agency uh, you know the other circle they're doing right. a fabulous job uh, where they put us in 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 the right kind of you know a live opportunities where we can showcase the you know the plethora of things that we can actually do uh we're into uh, you know authored articles we're into uh you know putting out like video content and we also have our social media platform where we yeah. literally have different buckets you know where we say okay uh brand integrations this is what we did uh brand solutions this is what we did live integrations this is what we did so we're kind of putting it out there saying that hey guys we manage these talents but we these are the solutions that we give so hopefully it's going to reach the masses uh, at some point it is it is definitely reaching the march ma- masses definitely yeah so that's uh, but but um, you know it 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 is a task it's a, yeah it's a task and it's a, I, i i have an opinion on this that it it has a long way to go it does so a, a part of that is because people don't understand the differences between like what a label does what is a booking agency okay. what, yeah. yeah so it becomes it, it becomes very difficult to explain like for example right now in one it's, of the meetings what is the different difference between a music label and a music agent so, sorry you you want to know what the difference is yeah. I, i i did yeah okay so let's let's say for example there is an artist okay let's say artist x okay now artist x needs to put out music right yeah. because that's what makes them a musician mm-hmm. now they need this content to get released right like let, let's say for example they have five songs okay now how do you release these five songs mm-hmm. so there is the route where you could get signed to either a major label like warner universal t series uh, sare gama and the works okay or you could go to a distribution platform like a believe orchard avol uh, there are many such type of distribution uh, uh, platforms available or you could do it some you know with with something like a madverse or tuneco where you just upload the song directly on your own right yeah. but the point is that you need a partner mm-hmm. or a means to release this content and put it out in the world that is typically what a label or a distributor will do right now these uh, th- this is for the content piece then you need a management agency to actually help you broker these deals or to you know read the contracts say 
this is this this is a good deal this is not a good deal this is what a uh, this is what my artist will do or not all of that including what pr agency to sign up what is the pr agenda for the artist uh, you know if if something big happens for example right uh, recently we did an integration of nikita gandhi and nakash aziz yeah. on big boss uh, yeah. you know where they performed uh, their famous songs to uh, yeah. there were like 15 crore people watching you know so that that is like a huge thing now these things need to be brokered by a management agency you yeah. know to even decide should an artist go on a platform like big boss uh, what are the pros and cons how do we how do we integrate it what songs to do and i personally think that agencies are more open for your opinions rather than you know big labels are concerned no. again about small details if 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 i want matlab if i want the work on 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 the smaller details like the marketing they will they will treat you in depth depth of knowledge regarding that i i i definitely feel this that a big music label and a normal agency or a good agency also they have this difference also so i'll tell you where that happens okay uh now for example if there is a a music label they will say okay you know what uh for this this album tour we will do only these radio tra- trails we will only do these pr interviews and all of that they might be a little selective depending on how big the label is whereas yeah. from from an artist management agency's uh, perspective yeah. we want our artist to get as much traction regarding an album to uh, like an album cycle or an india tour but obviously we will also pick and choose we won't just say you know okay ye interview kar lo ya yahan par bhi chale jao yahan par bhi because the artist will say guys i can't do everything i have only so many hours in the day i can only promote so much uh, of my content so we will take a call but our call is based more on the the valuation that will be added to the artist whereas a label might more so be interested in in the in the album because that is the asset that a label is trying to grow or monetize whereas what we are looking to do is we are looking to do everything which is in the best interest of the artist so you're right about that that an agency might you know you might be able to convince an agency to do something yeah. because we have that Extra. kind of yeah we have that rapport with the artist Yeah. uh you know in fact i just got off a call with neeti mohan where i was you know uh, i explained something to her and she's just literally one of the sweetest she's like hamza you tell me what you want me to do i'm ready to do it like you know i know you have my back so when that happens you know like we also gain confidence factor, yeah. yeah and then I, I, honestly there is nothing will happen if the artist and the agency are not in sync you know yeah we need to like nikita nakash you know they uh, they are like which songs do you think you know we should do sure. so them giving me that kind of trust where you know we're sitting and saying okay you know what maybe don't do this song do this song because so many people know this song and there'll be an instant recognition so that trust factor is very important it it takes years to build that but uh, but yeah that's that's the best space to be in So Hamza, when you joined DCA, so any key challenges you faced in the you know coming upcoming years? So um, see, uh, to be very honest, when when DCA, so DCA obviously like primarily was like entertainment, right? Like we have the the who's who of the entertainment world, uh, but entertainment works slightly differently from music. Yeah. i mean they they fall into the same entertainment category yes. but the requirements of what a movie star has okay uh, or, or or what a movie star needs are, are somewhat different from what a music artist will require right so the the not the challenge i would say i it it's more like they were used to a certain way of working and i had to come in and obviously say that okay guys this is what an a music artist requires and then obviously the question was like why 
so then i had to like break it down and say okay you know this is why we need to have this 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 team this is why we need to have like a brand solutions team that is specifically only for music this is why we need to hire pr this is why we need to have a social media agency so mm -hmm. it was interesting it's not a challenge but it was like a sort of a mind mindset shift it it was a revamp basically it it's not really a revamp on the dca brand level on it's the, within on the, the brand level on the marketing level I'm yeah sorry. on and that to marketing related to a particular division you know mm -hmm. so entertainment obviously does its own thing it has its way of working and then within that the music team has its sort of way of working and we obviously wherever possible we get synergies uh, you know to get uh either like an actress or actor to feature in a music video or where uh, if there's a brand campaign happening with an actor then we can get our music artist to either sing or compose the brand campaign so there's a lovely synergy that's happening now so that's great so amza uh, as you know tca celebrates its third anniversary and if i that's, not that's so right, yeah. some of the key achievements you are you know most proud of oh i mean uh, see dca on a whole has uh, obviously done like tons of things uh, there are too many in the entertainment space like one of the things that i could probably uh, tell you right now is like tripti dimri and all the stuff that's happened on uh, on her end and but i i'm not the right person to comment on that I, in, as far as music is concerned we are very proud of the fact that last year we delivered like 120% growth uh so yeah that, uh, we we really really had to like you know uh, i mean i'm fortunate enough to have like a great team that's yeah. equally driven sometimes i have to tell them guys it's 1 o'clock you know at night we can do this at 9 a.m tomorrow morning but they're like no 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 we just want to close this so so <laughs> having a team that's equally driven actually helps um it's it's just we've done a lot of things that would which be basically yeah ideally it's it's having a dream dream team and a dream roster uh, yeah. you know right now for example we've got uh, we've booked uh, neeti mohan for uh, you know opening at uh, uh, performing at the paris uh, olympics uh, she's yeah and this, the show is sold out you know for the india house so that is something which is crazy uh, we've got uh, you know we we've, we've really taken nikita gandhi uh and put her right there as as like you know now a a a, a ticketing artist who's doing like these really cool concerts uh, if you just you can just go to her insta page and see what she's doing we've done lo a lot of brand deals with amal uh you know because he's such a he's like a brand friendly face uh you know all we needed to do was like get the right kind of brands integrate that uh you know together uh with nakash uh we we've, we've just signed a label deal I, I, i won't tell you what that is right now until it's it's out in uh in the open uh so that then we we've, we've done uh, you know a lot of work with shreya jain or we did a lot of work with lakshay kapoor uh, we literally took him from like you know being a studio singer to putting him on stage getting him to open then we've got an artist like sagar wali kawali you know sagar bhatia who Thank just you. performed yeah who like we sold about 8000 tickets at the at the dome show like last week you know and like i know what it is what it takes to you know get 200 people to come and watch a show uh so you know these are all milestones he in fact uh, a, a lot of credit goes to his personal manager vandana he he clocked in like 29 shows in wow. 29 days in feb like he's literally played a show every day you know so these are some some crazy things that we've done uh, which we are very happy with again i must be uh, you know missing out on a lot of things don't uh, don't don't quote me here uh, the vidya box uh, you know ep uh, that is just launched we did all the marketing uh, in india and the pr for it uh, too many things you know but i'm just like overall happy that we're doing everything we can so in that, in every capacity that? is there any plan that a uh, dca would uh, you know now uh, handle a uh, global artist okay uh see uh there is something that i want to tell you guys but i'm not sure i should right now but let's let's say that is something on the cards yeah uh, but so 
so again we cannot manage an international artist but we can be the artist representative for the india or the indian uh, subcontinent you know or or uh, asia pack so like i said international artists work very differently yeah. they'll have their management in the uh, in in their origin country or city rather uh and they would partner with us to do some of the booking and branding related uh pieces related to india that's how it would work but obviously you know uh it would be my dream to probably get like an international metal band uh on on the roster uh yeah but so fingers what crossed is, what is the difference between you know what are the difference between the music business industry in international phase and in india what are the you know what where we are lacking what do you okay. what do you about so i would say uh, it's not so much about lacking as it is about a different mindset okay for example uh, in india the music industry is very uh, you know strongly supported by the film industry you know i mean Uh, 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 yeah like so bollywood takes a huge chunk of the music that is consumed uh, the the uh, you know the the sort of legacy that is built with a lot of uh, artists in india is based on the fact that they rely heavily on bollywood music right uh, in the west this model does not exist right yeah. uh the, that role is sort of taken care of by the bigger labels like the bigger labels would spend you know crazy amounts on like marketing uh promoting uh putting the uh you know the artists in like the grammy uh you know award ceremony or a grammy performance so our equivalent of that is like sort of you know bollywood mm -hmm. that is sort of like changing at this point in time Yeah. um and and one of the cultures a uh, shifts that i'm personally looking for is the ticketing uh touring culture right yeah. which is which exists in the west where mm -hmm. you can you can literally plan a tour you know going in a tour bus and you know going from like one city to another we do Our not indian artists are going globally these days then jeet karan they're doing yes. so good and they are known by everyone in this kind right so so that is something that our artists are now working towards now. uh you know they they're focusing more on ticketed shows they're focusing more on tours but the problem in india is the infrastructure like you cannot you cannot take an rv and you know like take a bus or a a, a tour bus and go from like say bangalore hyderabad to like delhi Yeah. That, that whereas in Europe you do that, you right? You you yeah. you play in Paris, then you drive to like maybe Brussels, and then you drive to and and it the the tour is mapped out like that. That does not happen in India. You know that is something that we're looking to change. But for that you'll have to have like the infrastructure in place. So that's a longer conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so Hamza, lastly, I would like to know that what are the you know upcoming project. what do you see and how do you see the music business industry in next 5 years ah uh, so uh, we are really excited about the brand solution uh, uh, you know wing that we've recently set up uh, we're looking at a lot of conceptual music ips uh, that we, that that we're taking the advantage that we have is we've got brands okay we've got talents and we've got the brand solution ideas and we have the know how to you know like make hit songs i mean we've got azim dayani uh, who is literally like the best music supervisor in the country so imagine when we go to a brand and say hey guys this is what we have to offer that is like a a total package that we feel that we have an advantage uh, in you know so that is something that we're really looking forward to uh we are also looking forward to creating brand anthems creating brand jingles uh you know yeah. making making real songs uh these are things that we are looking at um mm -hmm. uh and we are also getting into uh the ticketing model uh 
by that i don't mean we're starting a ticketing website but we're partnering with ticketing agencies to kind of see how we can do ticketed tours uh yeah. that is something that we're doing and uh, there are a few collabs uh, which are happening which i can't uh, tell you about right now but a lot of interesting things um the next 5 years um what is the shift i would say that artists are focusing on building communities now right merchandising uh, I, and i come from a merchandising background for two reasons one is that uh, you know back in the day like 10 12 years ago my own band koshish we were able to sell like 1000 uh, 1000 t-shirts uh, you know sell dvd box sets and and we're like like a hindi metal band you know uh, so i feel that potential is not uh, sort of tapped into uh, at this point in time so that is something that happens only when you build a community of hardcore fans right yeah. like the paying audience now it's not so much about oh i have 15 million listeners right it's about out of those 15 million listeners how many fans are going to actually stream your song 20 times a day when it gets released how many of those will send and spam their of friends saying guys my favorite artist has come out with this song check it out how many of those people will go and buy tickets to a show that you've announced how many of those people will buy the merchandise and take selfies saying that guys i bought like look at me i mean i'm you know in a business interview i'm wearing a tool t-shirt because <laughs> that's that this is the band i support right like so this kind of fandom is what artists have now realized is the key to growing uh, like you know an artist from say x to 100x yeah. so in the next 5 years i feel all artists are going to look at focusing on this aspect to to be able to do what diljeet has done you know uh, i don't know if many people know this uh, for his australia new zealand tour the tickets he did has, not even uh, he has so, his own t-shirts also i have seen it he, he's yeah uh, he's gotten into merchandise but yeah. the the startling fact was he was able to sell out tickets in australia and new zealand before they even went into sale in pre-sale uh, he was able to sell out and that is insane he was able to sell out tickets in like uh, in in uh, in canada in some yeah. record time you know like some 20000 tickets or 30000 tickets got sold off in like some 2 or 3 hours which is which is insane but what people don't realize is that he has been doing that consistently for like the last 10 12 years 10 to 12 years yeah that is what the overall the trick is so that's i feel great. next 5 years that's the plan hmm. that's great hamza it was our pleasure to have you on our show thank you so much for your time hope to see you very soon thank you so much thank you for having me bye bye thank you bye